Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about my November wrap-up. We're going to look at all the books that I read, as you should, in a wrap-up. And I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on them, as you do a wrap-up. Let's just jump right in. What we do here is go back, 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 back. For the month of November, I read a total of 15 books. It has been my best month yet, and it's usually how it goes, November, December, October. Uh, I, I tend to read more than the rest of the year, and I think that's just a normal thing all the way around. You know, the fall and winter months, you hibernate, you read, you eat, you watch movies, and you do all the cozy things. Not only did I read 15 books, but last month was round 13 of Tome Topple, and I was able to read three books for Tome Topple, so three tomes in two weeks. I'm so proud of myself. Let's just jump into the first book that I opened up the month with, and that was Beneath Ash and Bone by D. Alexander Ward. I read this for a Nightworms reading blog that I did. Um, I'll link it up above if you want to check it out. I absolutely adored this book and I don't know why it took me almost a year to finally pick this up. I'm not going to talk too much about this because like I said I do have a reading blog where I talk about this as I go reading it but all this is is we're following a sheriff. He gets a call that there's a little boy missing. He went missing after his birthday party and so he goes to this it's like a mansion like a like a manor almost and he's searching for the boy the boy is found dead and then starts the investigation of what happened to this boy and all these weird occurrences that happen at this home. I ended up giving this book five stars. The next book I finished because I actually started this book in October and it was for the Stacks of Strange October pick and that was Hollow Kingdom by Kira Jane Buxton. This was an okay book. Here we're following a crow as the end of the world is happening. There are zombies and we are just looking at the world through this crow. Uh, it was funny. It was weird because that's what we read for Stacks of Strange. I don't know. I, there was times where it hit me because we're dealing with animals as the world is going to crap and so we're seeing their points of views and sometimes it was sad uh, but I thought this was just overall okay like I said it was funny and it was entertaining but nothing that I'll reread again at least I don't think but this was quite the experience I ended up giving this book three stars the next book that I read I fell in love with I actually didn't find out about this book until my friend Crystal posted about it on Instagram and I was like wait what what is this because this is an Italian based witch story and uh, when I saw that I was like I need that. The book is Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the first Carrie Maniscalco book that I read and I loved it so much that I need to read all of her books. I like her writing and I just love her atmosphericness in the book and from what I hear her other books are the same way. Here we are following Emilia and uh, Emilia works at a, an Italian restaurant. This is all based in Italy, but she works at an Italian restaurant that her family owns. So she's there, she cooks. She's always thinking about cooking and like creating new dishes. I loved that part of it, all the dishes. I was just like salivating. But one day, Emilia finds her twin sister, Vi Victoria? Vittoria, she finds her murdered and so she's just trying to find out what happened to her sister and trying to find her murderer. Now, Emilia and Vittoria, they are both witches so they live life very like uh, guarded. They don't let anybody know that they're witches. So they try to avoid being noticed because, you know, witches are persecuted as is the case usually in a book. Uh, and so anyway, she's trying to find out who murdered her sister and she comes across one of the Dark Prince's, Wrath. I loved Wrath's character so much. The banter between Emilia and Wrath is just hilarious at times. I just had a really good time with this. I was flipping and turning and flipping and turning page after page after page. I couldn't get enough of it. And when I finished this book, I could not stop thinking about it. Emilia's perseverance to find out what happened to her sister is just incredible. And along the way, obviously, obviously she's learning secrets 
uh, that her Nona, her grandmother, never told her about. It was just a fun time. I loved reading an Italian based. Ba I can't talk today. I just can't. I loved reading an Italian based witch story. It was just everything that I needed that I never knew I needed. Needless to say, I ended up giving Kingdom of the Wicked five stars. Next up, I read The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. Here we are following Hal and she is down in the dumps. She barely makes any money. She has a whole bunch of bills to pay. And on top of that, she has somebody coming after her because she owes this person money. So they come looking for her so that she can pay up the money that she owes, but she doesn't have it. They give her a time frame to where uh, she could pay it back. And if not, she's in trouble. At the same time she gets a letter saying that she has inherited something from a dead relative uh, but the letter is actually not for her so she's trying to find a way to scam these people out of the money basically and take the inheritance because it would solve a lot of her problems. She ends up going to the funeral of this person and she ends up staying with the family at this home and the whole entire time she has like this moral debate within her like should she scam these people, should she not, should she be honest with them and all these things. Obviously this is a thriller, a mystery thriller, so in the background there is this mystery and she's trying to find out why she got this letter when it wasn't meant for her. Uh, needless to say, I really did enjoy it. I enjoy all of Ruth Ware's books, uh, whether they suck or not. My favorite Ruth Ware up to date is The Woman in Cabin 10. It's the first book that I read from her and I fell in love with it. Ruth Ware is an auto buy for me, so... I'm always going to enjoy her books even though sometimes I don't like the endings but I did like the resolution and how everything closed up in this book. I think it closed up real nice. I ended up giving this book four stars. Well third time's a charm. I try to talk about that book like five times. The next book you guys. The best. Tender is the flesh. Wow 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 wow. If you have not read this book please go read it. If you're a vegan and don't like meat, please go read it. If you're not vegan and you love meat, please go read it. This was amazing. I have a whole review on Goodreads. I, this is like the longest review I have ever written, ever, on Goodreads. So let's start off with uh, the author of this book. The author of this book is Argentinian, so this is a translated book. My second translated book, you guys, last month or the month before that in August or October, I read uh, Let the Right One In, which is a Swedish tr translated novel. And this time I read an Argentinian novel. Uh, so I'm so tempted to read this book in Spanish because I always feel like things get lost in translation. Feelings get lost in translation. And this gave me all the feels. So I can't even imagine reading it in its original uh, language. I just, I can't. Uh, basically here we are following a world where there is no animal product, no animals, no, not that there isn't, but the animals have all become infected with something that basically kills human. They're, they are poisonous to us. So no more meat, no more dogs, no more animals, period. They kill off all the animals because they are dangerous to humans, you know? Can you imagine living in a world where there are no animals? I can imagine living in a world without dogs. Like, I love dogs. I love all animals. I see a squirrel and I'm just, like, mesmerized by them. Uh, the only animals I really don't like too much are birds, but they're still beautiful. So I can't picture a world where there are no animals. I can't picture a world where you have to kill off all your animals. What happens? Well, first off, this is an Argentinian novel, and if you guys don't know, meat is very, very prevalent in Argentina. It is our food of choice. I mean, I was raised with meat in my hands and sucking on the meat and, you know, the juice, and that's just how I was raised. So I know how significant this book is in the Argentinian culture. Like, no meat? What? So what do they do? 
what does this world do? They start farming humans to get what they call special meat. We're giving tours of the processing plant where they process the special meat, how these humans are treated, uh, what they do. I, I mean, it is just so descriptive and graphic. I was so mesmerized by this book. It was very well written, well, very well translated. I am, so, again, I'm so tempted to read the, the Spanish one because I feel like I'm gonna have more than the feels that I got with this one. I'm not gonna talk too much about it. I mean, I, I have already, but I, I gave this all the stars, five stars, a million stars. It was great. If you haven't read it, please do so. It's short and it is just wow. Next book I read was for Tome Topo. It was the first book that I read for Tome Topo. These are all scattered because, so I was trying to read four books for Tome Topo, but uh, I caught myself reading uh, non-tome books as well while the tome topper was going on because I had library holds that had come in and I had to read them or audiobooks and so all my tomes are mixed in with other regular books so I think that taking time off from reading tomes and reading other books that I that or listening to other audiobooks just mess me up uh, but either way three books three tomes was perfect but the first one that I read was Black Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse as you guys know for November it was indigenous month and so this one of the challenges was to read an indigenous book and so I read this one uh, I actually didn't even know that this was going to be a book until I saw Sam's, which is the host, the creator of the Tome Topple. She talked about it in her TBR and I didn't know what else to read so I just chose this. It's a new release and I'm so glad I did. This was so good, so entertaining, fast-paced, action-packed. I love the characters and it was just phenomenal. To be completely honest with you guys, I don't even know how to explain this book. There was so much going on. When we start off the book, we start off with Serapio and his mom and all you know is that she is preparing him for something uh, and she's preparing him in a gruesome way. He's supposed to be some sort of hope or or some sort of savior in the future mind you when we meet him he's a little boy and she ends up scarring him and leaving him blind and ends up killing herself uh and so he knows that he is meant for something he just doesn't know what it is so he's just going through life raised by his dad his dad was against his mom's and her his mom and her beliefs but he didn't get to his son on time and so she scarred him left him blind and all that then we're following another character that has powers she's a teak and so she can calm the waters with her song and she can do many other things and she is a captain. She has a ship. She is hired to do this job. This is years later. She basically has to take Serapio, which is her passenger. She has to take him to the certain area by a certain time. And so it's just following her with this passenger and all the adventures that happened while he's on the ship and getting to know his character and her character. I, I, I feel like I'm not doing it justice explaining what this book is about, but I I loved it. It was phenomenal. I ended up giving this book five stars. That was like the suckiest explanation ever for a book. Ever. The next book I finished, it, and I say finished because I started this book, it was either in March or April of this year and I put it down and I never picked it back up, but I finally did. Honestly, this book was a little bit boring for me at the beginning and so that's why I put it down but I'm so glad I finished it because I ended up really enjoying it and that is The Two Lives of Lydia Bird by Josie Silver. Uh, this here we're following Josie and when we start off the book it's her birthday she's waiting for her boyfriend her fiance to get home they're gonna go have dinner you know the usual birthday things uh, but her boyfriend never made her fiance it's her fiance never makes it to the house because he's been killed and so we're just following her she's trying to cope with this but uh, one of these times she goes to sleep and when she wakes up in her in her dream world she wakes up and her boyfriend is there and so she's living two lives she's living her day-to-day -day where her fiance is dead and then she's living in this dream world where her fiance is alive and they keep going through their life and so she's battling this not being with him 
in real life and then being with him in this dream world where she just wants to stay there and be with him all the time. Uh, and we're also following the transitions between her real life and the dream world and what it's doing to her in real life. I really did enjoy it. I, I did find it a little bit boring in the first half of the book because it's just her going through this back and forth in the dream world and in real life that it got a little bit redundant, but after the halfway mark, I feel like it redeemed itself because we started getting other things incorporated into the story in her waking world. It was, it made me cry. It made me sentimental. I predicted the end. It, it was pretty predictable, but still it didn't take away from the uniqueness. The story was so unique and I think that's why I loved it as well. I really enjoyed Josie. I really felt for her and what she was going through. I couldn't even imagine being in her situation. Uh, I don't I don't even know how how I would act. I would probably want to stay in that dream world and like put myself in a coma or something. That's the weirdest thing to say. I ended up giving this book four stars. Next book up is Invisible Girl by Lisa Jewell. This was the November book for the Buddy Reads to Die For book club. And Lisa Jewell, what can we say? I love her books. She is amazing. And I think she's right there under uh, Ruth Ware. Her books always tend to be five stars for me. I really enjoy them. I enjoy her writing style. I enjoy her characters. And this was no exception. Here we're following a couple of characters. We're following Sapphire. We're following Owen. We're following Rowan. And we're following Kate. Here, Owen is... Uh, He's a, a professor and one day he goes to this party and after this party he is being accused of sexual harassment and he basically gets told that he can continue working there. Obviously he's got, he gets suspended but he's like, but they tell him you can keep working here but you have to go and get uh, some sort of like training or therapy or something like that to be able to come back to work. At the same time that this is happening there is a disappearance of this girl Sapphire Maddox and uh, you find out that they had a little bit of an interaction at some point so he's getting blamed for her disappearance as well and then his front neighbors his front door neighbors Kate and Rowan they're married and they're just watching everything Rowan is a psychologist and he or a therapist and he and Sapphire was his patient at one point so it's just like this whole intermingling thing so we're just trying to find out where sapphire is what did owen do did he have anything to do with it and it was just uncovering this whole thing of lies and secrets i loved kate's character my favorite character honestly was sapphire's character i did love kate's character at the beginning i didn't like her so much but at the end i was rooting for her i was like yes girl like I loved the outcome of her character. If you're gonna read this, I highly recommend the audiobook if you listen to audiobooks because it is a full cast and it just brings so much life into the novel. This story was phenomenal. Again, needless to say, Lisa Jewell, I gave this one five stars. Next up, I read uh, Go Down Hard by Ali. I don't know if it's C or Say or CA. <laughs> I'm sorry but first off look at that cover yes 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 this was a nightworms book party that i participated in this uh post is already actually up on the nightworms blog so i will link that one down below so that you can see how we all felt when we start off this book we start off with jack and we know that he has weird tendencies and by weird tendencies he's a serial killer and a rapist or a serial killer and a rapist. I mean, they go hand in hand, right? Sometimes. And he is just, he lives on this property, on like this huge property where it's like almost like farmish, where it's like, like, but a lot of little, there's a lot of land. So his house is like on the top of a like hill or something. And then there's like another house, like, I don't know, like a mile or two away. Uh, and he noticed that there's somebody moving to this house and so he's like peeking because he sees that it's a woman and you know he likes to kill women and so he's trying to see how he can meet her so that he can you know but he likes to play with his victims he'll like cage them up and like let them think that they ran away loose and then he's like on the hunt for them on his property he's just crazy uh but then we're also following meg which is uh the same the girl who moved there in that area uh, and she is a killer too. 
and she is running after one of her victims one day and he runs straight to this guy's house and she barges in there and when she barges in there uh, and kills this guy that she was after, Jack is in there killing somebody else. So they're both like, well, this, this is, this is weird and strange. This book was so, so, so good. It was so bantery. Is that a word? You're, you're just always there like, oh my gosh, are they going to kill each other? What? It was just such a fun time. It was short. It packed a punch. I highly recommend this book. I mean, two serial killers. What are the chances of this? It was just so good. I ended up giving this one five stars. Next book was also a Nightworms book party and that is Word and Other Derelictions by Adam L.G. Neville. This is my first uh, Neville book even though I do own The Reddening by him as well. I need to read that one because I loved this. Now this book party is already up on the blog. I will leave that link down below as well if you want to check it out. Not everybody liked this and this is an acquired taste but let me tell you guys I enjoyed this so much. Basic, basically, basically, this is short stories all about what would happen to the world if there was no humans, if there was no, if it was just abandoned. And that is exactly how I felt reading this. I felt like I was taking tours of these abandoned places where bad things happened before everybody was erased from the face of the planet. Did that make sense? Uh, I just felt like I was on a tour of an abandoned jail. I don't know why I said I say that in specific because I've been on tours of abandoned jails and it's just so eerie and that's how I felt reading this book. I don't know how else to explain it. It's super short, like super super short. There are five or six stories in this I can't really remember but they're really, really short, but the way he describes these sceneries and these areas is just so captivating. I ended up giving this collection four stars. You know that's a hard thing to do. Usually collections and sh short story collections and anthologies for me are usually three stars at best, but this one was so, so good. And I have another short story collection here, you guys, that we'll get to that. The next book was part of Tome Topple and I finally finished The Living Dead. I cannot believe this. I started this book back in May. And then I just put it down and I don't know what happened. I put it down at like the 300 page mark, I believe, or 200 page mark. And But in the back of my head, I'm always like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? What's going to happen? I'm so glad I dived back in because my heart... I loved all the characters in this book. I loved the world. Uh, it is a 600 plus page book so I think it goes without saying that a little portion of this book bored me um, when we got to the part where all the stories meet up in ones because here we're following different characters in different parts of the world. Uh, but at the end they all meet up and that part when we got to like the remaking of the world or re uh, not populating but yeah repopulating or remaking the world when we got to that part I found myself bored I really hated Richard Lindoff's character we see him at the beginning a little bit I hated his character and honestly I skimmed through all his parts but I understand why he's in the book so just because I didn't like him and I didn't like his... I mean, I I actually hated him. Uh, but other than that, all the characters, Nishimura, I loved him so much. My uh, girl crush in this book is Charlie. I love her. I love her from page one. Etta Hoffman, love her so much. Greer, I loved her so much. Like, all the characters in this... I was so sad when I finished it because I felt like I was breaking up with friends or I was, like, moving away and I would never see these friends again. I just felt like this desolation in me, is that a word? That I just... I, I cannot explain. Zombies, survival, killing, death, turning... Uh, I loved this. One of my 
favorite parts was the Navy ship and I thought that was going to be my least liked area when I read the synopsis of this at the beginning when I when I heard that it was going to be released and I read the synopsis I'm like really a Navy ship I thought I was going to hate that part but I ended up loving it I loved it we have a, a perspective from the zombies one of my favorite parts of the book as well and uh I just I can't talk enough about this five stars okay you guys I think we're like hitting the 30 minute mark here but a little story on the next book that I read. I read this book about two to three years ago and hated it. I actually liked it but the ending left me so confused and so frustrated that I would just I just decided to I'm not gonna read this series. It's a trilogy. It sucks. I'm not gonna read it. But in reality I did like it. I liked the magical elements in the story. I like the characters. It's just the way that it's written really confused me and you'll see what I mean because it's the fifth season. But everybody always talks about how much they love this book that I'm like, you know what? I must have missed something here. Uh, there's this really, really like stick out sex scene. It, it's a memorable scene. And so I'm like, I kept thinking about that scene and I kept thinking about the characters and I'm like, man, I like it so much, but that ending just left me so confused. And then I started thinking, well, maybe I should have jumped into book two because maybe I would have found some answers. So I decided to put a hold on the audiobook because I'm like, maybe the audiobook will help me out a little bit. When I read this book, I think it was three years ago. I wasn't into audiobooks and so now I'm like well maybe the audiobook would help me understand it better and maybe I'll catch something that I missed on the first time and yes I ended up loving this so much I'm actually gonna read book two this month in December uh, and I can't wait I love how it's written N.K. Jemisin is brilliant and now I can see why people say that I can't believe I didn't like it the first time uh, the audiobook was definitely the way to go here we are following a world where every so often the world sort of like redoes itself uh, and the way that it ends is with some sort of weather catastrophe I, I hope I'm explaining this right because still I'm still a little confused I'm not completely clear but I think that that's the beauty of the trilogy is that you want to jump into book two because I feel like I'm going to get a lot of answers to some of the things that I'm still confused about and so anyways they're about to hit this season of rebirth for the earth and they're just explaining what happens to the earth when these catastrophes happen and the magic system is in this is that people that can control the earth whether it's uh, earthquakes rain wind whatever it is and then th there's these obelisks in the sky which I'm still not sure what they do I, I'm sort of a little bit understanding but I'm hoping that the second book which is called The Obelisk Gate touches more on these things that are in the sky. Anyways I loved it. I loved Esun's character. I, lo I, mean, I, I, I loved all the characters in this book. It was gripping and I'm so so happy that I decided to reread it because it really helped me understand what was going on. I haven't rated this yet uh, but I think I am leaning towards a four star. I just I can't wait to read the rest of the series. We're down to the last three books. The next book I read was also for Tome Topple. See I don't know if this can be con considered a tome considered um, but you know what I'm gonna consider this a tome because it sits at 497 pages 498 pages uh, for two more pages I'm gonna consider it a tome and I'm just gonna say that I read four books four tomes for Tome Topple. The next book I read was my final book for Tome Topple and that is Wonderstruck by Brian Selznick. I've had this sitting on my shelves for a while. I bought this at uh, Half Price Books about three four years ago because I just thought it was so pretty and I loved this. This is actually a novel that has illustrations in it. We're following two storylines that meet up towards the end. We're following a boy and he was born half deaf. 
uh, but something happens one night. His mom dies, okay? He, uh, we're, we're following him as he's grieving, as he's trying to cope with his mother's death. Uh, one night there's this storm and this lightning. He gets struck by lightning and he ends up being completely deaf. Now the doctors say that he might get his hearing back, he might not. It's a waiting game to see if he does or doesn't. Uh, but at the same time we're following another story which is Rose and Rose's story is told in 1927 when she's a little girl. Ben, which is the little boy that we start off the story with that I just told you about, is in 1977. So we flash back to 1927 and we're following Rose. Rose is a deaf girl and you follow her story story through pictures. So Ben's story is all written out and then her story is through pictures and what she's going through as a deaf person and uh, just the life that she lives, her loneliness. There's deaf representation in this book obviously. I can't really comment on, comment on it but I feel like it was written so good. It it tells you the emotions that the these two deaf characters have, what they go through, the loneliness that they feel. Uh, it was such a good time and I literally read this. It's a big chunker but because it has pictures in it, it just flies by so much. I think I read 381 pages in one sitting and I was mesmerized. If you haven't read this, I highly recommend it. It's an easy read and you really get to see the point of view from a deaf person. I ended up giving this book five stars. The next book I read was our November pick for Stacks of Strange and that is In the House in the Dark of the Woods by Laird Hunt. I, I haven't rated this. I haven't written a review. Weird. I don't even know what to say about this. We're following a woman and she is with her husband and with her man, because that's how she, my man, and her son. And she tells them, I'm going to go pick some berries in the woods. I'll be back. Uh, but she gets lost and she takes this whole trip within these woods that I still don't know what happened. <laughs> it's written beautifully. It's gripping. And you want to know more of this journey that this girl or this woman is going on. But it is so trippy and weird. And I still don't know how I feel about it. I still don't know what I read. And I still don't know what I'm going to rate it. We do have a live show. By the time this video goes up, the live show will be up already. So I will link it down below. And you'll get to hear what we all thought about this book. But we are all confused AF. And then the last and final book that I read was a short story collection that, spoiler alert, I gave five stars to. What? Five stars to a short story collection? I keep wanting to say stort shory collection. No. Five stars, you guys. The Eyeless Man. Have you guys heard of The Eyeless Man? Because I've never heard of The Eyeless Man in my entire life. But the minute that I read In Search of the Eyeless Man, I was like, it was just so like, what is this? This all starts off with this professor of folklore. His name is Dr. Maynard Wills. And he gets introduced to this podcast which is called Video Palace by his teacher's assistant uh, Daniel Daniel Carver. I was looking for his name. So Daniel Carver uh, shows him this podcast and basically in this podcast we're following this couple and uh, they find this VHS tape and they watch it and just strange things happen to him. Mark Cambria is is the guy uh, and so after he watches this video, his girlfriend starts recording him at night because he's speaking like this, like this weird language. Look, I'm getting goosebumps. And so Dr. Maynard Wills gets so enthralled in this podcast that he just immerses himself in finding the origin of the eyeless man. And so he contacts a few people that he knows that have had encounters with the eyeless man or knows of someone that has that has had an encounter with the eyeless man. And it's just them recounting the stories of what happened, what they saw, what they experienced. Uh, but what I loved about this book is number one, those stories are gripping and I had like this curiosity in me from the minute that I saw 
this book when I saw the eyeless man I had this curiosity in me that I just needed I needed to know I needed to know and story after story after story I was just enthralled and so the funny thing is that although these stories are similar in outcome they're not similar in occurrences if that makes sense so they were all different although they were all the same at the end uh, but what I loved about this book is that in between all of these stories you have sort of like palate cleansers and uh, because Dr. Maynard Wills it is also telling us his journey along the way as he spoke to different people to finding the origin so they were like little palate cleansers in between these stories which made this so easy to binge read because you know sometimes with short stories collection at least for me I can like read a story and then I have to go and read something else or wait a day and then read another story so that they don't get muddled together these little chapter breaks or story breaks really help with that because you can read these little these little instances that Dr. Wills is going through and then jump into another story and all these stories don't get muddled together. I'm repeating myself. Uh, this was actually a book party for Nightworms as well and as a matter of fact the blog post just went up today so I will leave that linked down below as well but I love this so much like I said I gave this five stars uh, I highly recommend this especially if you like short short here we go especially if you like short story collections I think that a lot of people will like this one and if you don't know who the eyeless man is creepy creepy so that's it you guys those are all the books that I read for the month of November I'm sorry this video is so long last month was long as well but when you read this many books and you talk as much as I do it's sort of like I can't help it you know what I'm saying especially when you talk about books when you talk about something that you love you're just like tick, 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 and that's what happens to me I try to cut it down as much as possible but let me know what was your favorite book for the month of November. I have a few favorites, you guys. I can't pick just one. Tender is the Flesh, The uh, Kingdom of the Wicked, uh, Black Sun, The Living Dead, Fifth Season. It was such a fantastic reading month. And I think that the majority of these books were four and five stars. I had one three-star book, which was Hollow Kingdom. But four and five star books the whole entire month. I loved it. I had so much fun. Tell me what was your favorite book. Tell me what was your least favorite book in the month of November. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Long ass video.